Hi everyone and welcome to a video on OBD readers. So if you've ever seen this sort of icon appear on your dash light then you probably need an OBD reader because what that is is a check engine light and it could mean pretty much anything. What you need is an OBD scanner and reader so that could potentially keep you moving. So what actually is OBD? Well it stands for Onboard Diagnostics and it's a standard method to read a car's ECU, electronic control unit or engine control unit or electronic um, engine control module um, and it's standardized by the SAE you can read the car's fault codes you can potentially clear them and even if you don't clear them then you can figure out what they are and diagnose your vehicle and that could actually make the difference between you being able to continue a trip or uh, get back on a racetrack or not now there's four classes of code, P, B, C and U for um, engine and transmission, body, chassis and network which is things like CAN bus moving data around the vehicle. Here's an example of some of the codes, um, intake temperature too high, fuel delivery area, ABS pump motor control. You can see how having that sort of information rather than just a check engine light would be really useful if you're trying to figure out what is actually wrong with your car. So OBD hasn't always been mandatory. Um, in 1996 the USA made it so, and um, that was followed by Europe in 2001 and Australia and New Zealand took a while to get going, 2006 for petrol cars, 2007 for diesels, but pretty much every car that um, you uh, own or drive should have an OBD port by, by this time. Now there's two methods of actually reading and clearing and understanding OBD data. One is you can just get a handheld like that unit on the left there. You plug it in and it's powered by the OBD port itself. Up it comes, you read the codes, you understand them and optionally you can clear them. Or you can get a Bluetooth adapter, you plug the Bluetooth adapter in, you connect your phone to it um, by Bluetooth and you run an app. The basic difference is the handheld is very easy to use, it's robust, it doesn't require Bluetooth or batteries or anything else like that but it's fairly feature limited. The app has got many more features, it can look stuff up on Google, um, it can get dashboards, all sorts of um, amazing features and graphs but um, it's obviously on a smartphone and um, it's, it's wireless as well which may or may not be a pro and a con. So fundamentally same sort of thing, just two different methods there. Now there are manufacturer specific um, uh, readers such as this one for Nan Nancom um, for Land Rover, Forescan for Ford and Mazda and JScan for Jeep. The problem with the OBD standard is that it's not actually a complete standard. All the manufacturers have created special codes for their own use and it's best if your OBD scanner or reader understands those then you get the maximum possible um, benefit out, out of the, the scanner that you've got there. But you can go a long way with just a generic scanner. So how do you use it? The car gets a fault, check engine light or something comes on, then you scan the um, car, you look up the fault, you diagnose the problem using your brain and at that point you've got three basic options. One, you can clear the fault and carry on, which you may or may not be able to do if you know, for example, that it's only a certain set of circumstances that triggers the fault or it's a fault that you really don't care about, then you might be able to just clear the codes and carry on. Two, you could just get your tools out and actually fix the root cause. Or three, you could say, look, that's serious and I can't actually fix it and I'm just going to stop driving. At least you've got the information to have a clue what's happening as opposed to just that silly check engine light which tells you nothing at all. Alright, so what we're going to do is use this 2008 Forester to generate a fault code and then we're going to clear it using these OBD scanners. So I've got a couple here from Autofix, a 127 and a 9000, and I've also got a couple of Bluetooth adapters, a cheap one I bought from JCAR and the Autofix 3210. So first thing we're going to do is start the car up. All right, so let's generate that engine code. I'm going to pull the car's um, airflow sensor out. So you can see there we've got a check engine light, even though the engine's running, and also it's throwing out the stability control system as well, and the cruise control. So one error has actually led to multiple car system failures. 
So this is the AutoFix 3210, a small Bluetooth adapter. There's the standard OBD connector ports that you can see there. I'm going to connect that up and use an app to diagnose what's happening. Alright, so we're going to run the OBD Mate app which is paired with the 3210 and the first thing to do is a one-time setup where you connect the app to the adapter. So for that um, we're just going to go back to um, Bluetooth and we're going to scan and there's the AutoFix 3210 that's come up so we're going to click on that and you can see it's pairing. wait for Bluetooth to complete the pairing. Now that's appeared in our paired list here we can go back to the app and we can click on connect and there's the AutoFix 3210 we've just found and then we connect. You can see that we've connected with the adapter now we're just checking the adapter can actually communicate with the vehicle. There we go and now we could put a card detail I'm just going to leave it as car 2 for the moment just click on OK doing an IM readiness check which is about emissions. Next thing it's doing is reading the trouble codes and it's going to find a few trouble codes because we have that check engine light on so it's found four of them. Freeze frame is a function where it reads a data stream and when it finds a trouble code or when the trouble code appears it actually just freezes um, the data so you can take a snapshot of exactly what's happening when the, when the code came up. So it's still doing its vehicle detection. Okay, all of that is done, so we can click OK there. So what we can do now is go into um, Diagnostics and then that will give us a bit more detail on what's happening there. So you can see that we've got a P0102 error, 0113 error and two more there. So um, whether it's current, pending or permanent. So that's all good. Um, we can take a look at each one of these in more detail. So. Uh, the circuit A is low, not surprising because I pulled the sensor, so that gives you a bit more detail there. Or I can just hit a Google search and then get even more information there, or screenshot it, whatever um, I want. Now what I could do here is I could rescan it, I could do that freeze frame I talked about earlier on, or put a data stream in, or I could just hit clear code, and that would actually clear these codes and get rid of the check engine light. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use one of the other units to do it, just so that we, we could do it if we wanted to. What I will show you, um, though, is a few more features here, I won't go through them all, but um, you can do a battery check um, here, so you've got a um, current battery reading, um, do a voltage reference there, uh, we could go into the um, dashboard there and um, there's the revs at the moment, so you can see that if I just increase the revs on the car like that, that's real-time data and then there's a whole bunch more um, real-time information, you, you, you can configure a lot of this stuff as well and create yourself graph readouts etc. So that's um, basically the app there, and I won't go through all the features, but the most important thing is that you can read those codes and then you can clear them if you need to. All right, so we're going to pull the 3210 out and put the 126 in. So that comes the 3210, just grab the 126 and that goes in like so, it comes to life. Okay, so I've just plugged it in, there's no on switch, it's powered by the um, OBD port itself and I'm just going to hit enter now, go into OBD, entering the system please wait and what we're going to do now is take a look at the code, so there's read code, I'm just going to press enter and there's exactly the same codes that were on the app there, so that's code 1 of 4 as you can see, 2 of 4 3 or 4, 4 or 4. Now you can't do a Google search or anything else like that on this one, um, but it is simpler. So I'm going to exit out of that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase those codes. I'm going to go to Erase Codes. I'm going to hit Enter. Um, Diagnostics, are you sure? Yes, Enter, I'm sure. Now it should turn the engine off. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, and we're just going to process. There you go. and the diagnostic information has been erased and cleared. So that's it, it's as simple as that. Then all I need to do is just literally unplug, put it back in my toolbox, and I'm away. 
All right, so in summary, OBD2 readers read a lot of the post-1996 CARS error codes and give you a lot of useful information. You can get to it with a handheld or Bluetooth um, application. Ideally, you need specialized equipment for your own car. Um, and be cautious about just clearing error codes and go. Error codes come up for a reason and you really want to be tracing that to a root cause and certainly um, these systems can help you do that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more content on four-wheel drive, cars, towing, racetracks and anything else I find interesting.